Hi, I'm Dara, and today I'll be showing you how easy of a solution the Analog Discovery 3 and Waveforms is. So now I'm just on the Digilent website and I've opened up the products page and I've registered my 83. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and download Waveforms. So I'm just gonna click Windows since that's what I'm on. And it's begun the download process. So I'm just gonna let that run and then come back to you when I open up the software. Okay, so now um, I've downloaded the setup file. So I'm just gonna follow the instructions and click next, I agree. Um, I'm just going to install all of these and then click next, just for me, that's fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click finish to close the setup. And this should open up Waveforms. So now that we have Waveforms successfully installed, we can plug in any Digilent device into Waveforms. Um, so now I have the Analog Discovery 3 device. And what I wanna do with this device right now for this video is just set up a simple scope. And so to do this, I have my breadboard set up. And the first thing I have is the orange wire with a white strip on the side, which is our scope channel one negative pin. And I have that next to the black wire, which is our ground pin. I also have the other orange wire with no strip as the scope channel one positive pin, which is next to the yellow pin, which is the wave gen channel one output. So now that I've ha had the hardware set up, I've plugged it into my laptop using USB and once I launch waveforms, we can see that it automatically detected that an 83 was connected through USB. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click select. And I'm gonna full screen this. And what I wanna do is just generate a waveform and then measure that using the scope. So I'm gonna go ahead and click wave gen. And I'm fine with all of these settings for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click run. And what I can do is just add a scope channel now. This automatically just puts them on top of each other, but we can just full screen the scope. So I'm gonna go ahead and click run. And now we can see our sine wave onto our scope page. I wanna go ahead and unclick channel two since we're not using that. Change the range to 200 and then change the base to 200 as well. And this way we can see our sine wave pretty clearly. One thing we can also do with the scope tab is use pulse cursors. And this will give us measurements as we hover around the um, screen as well. There's also other quick measure tools as well. Quick measure vertical and horizontal, as well as just a free measuring tool. And what I wanna do is add a detailed measurement so waveforms can do the work for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the view tab right here and I'm gonna click measurements. And then these, I'm gonna click add defined measurement. And so these are the options that they have right now. So vertical, there's a bunch of different options right here, but for this, I'm just gonna do a peak to peak measurement and add that. And then I also want to do a frequency measurement, which would be under horizontal. And these are all the different options that you can use as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and click frequency and add that. But and then close this. But as you can see, it's jumping around a bit. So I can go ahead and just stop it and we can get a good value. And we can still use these tools like we normally would once it's stopped as well. And now for the scope trigger settings, which is in the control toolbar, which is this top portion of waveforms right here, we can see the different settings for buffer, mode, trigger, uh, the source, which we're gonna keep as channel one since we only have that, the type, condition, rising, and I'm gonna keep it at that level. I wanna change that to one volt, and we can either type it in or use a dropdown I'm gonna keep hysteresis as auto. So I like all of those settings. And so I'm gonna keep it like so. And then now what I'm going to do is um, 
configure our channel. So right now we have our channel right here and we can click the gear icon and this will be used to configure anything you might want to change with the channel, including color or thickness, all of that. Onto the actual scope channel, we can also export the data right here. One thing we can also do is add filters. So if we wanted to add any filter, I can check this tab and it will add the filter according to our specification. So I'm going to click this icon right here and we can add the different sources for the filter, the modes, the type of filter you want, the size, cutoff, window, all of that. For this example, I'm not going to set up a filter, but it is there if you wanted to. We can also set up a wave gen, which is an internal digital loopback. And we can check this and then configure it from here as well. Change the type and frequency, amplitude, symmetry phase, all of that from there. Again, I'm not going to have this option clicked. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. We can also add different channels from here as well. So once you click add channels, we can add separate math channels as well as reference channels, which are imported or from previous measurements. I can also add different digital channels as well. Waveforms can do a lot more than just setting up scopes, including FFTs, spectrograms, histograms, data logging, cut cursors, and much more. I encourage you to explore the options in Waveforms and use the Analog Discovery 3 as your tool in any classes or projects you're currently working on. Thank you for watching.